Hey there, Space Pirates, I'm Pruitt, this is Jim Davis, and our next subject is one of the most captivating spider monsters that bear only eel will. It's Neogi on WebDM. <laughs> Jim, Neogi, the slavers, oh. the gross ones, oh. the creepy crawlies, the eel and their, spiders, and their furry legs. Oh my God! And their slick serpentine necks. Are you sufficiently grossed out? I don't even want to talk about this now. I'm done. Good because they're Neogi, right? It's a Twenty-second video, folks. Yeah, twenty-second video, done folks. Here. We're done. <laughs> That's why I love the Neogi. I love them. They're so creepy. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, for me, they're, they're this monster that because they've got this psychic ability to, to control the minds and, and actions of others, but they themselves are pathetic. They're yeah. weak. <laughs> they're, yeah. they are, they're not like a, a beholder or an abolith or, or even like a bunch of mind flayers. Like an individual mind flayer, you, a party can probably take mm -hmm. at, after a certain level. It'll be tough, but one it's just one of them. A single Neogi's like... What the fuck are you even doing here? Like this little bitty rat, they're like a spider eel thing yeah. that's only got like 15 like, AC and 33 hit points. Like 33 and, hit points. Yeah, it's just like. And they're small, like the normal, like the normal eel. They're small. They're small, right? Yeah. yeah they're so small. <laughs> they can fly. They're like these little. And you look at them and then you sort of like read the lore about them and see how their culture is developed and the fact that, yeah, all it takes is a quick rest and I can try to enslave you again. I can do this all day long. Uh -huh. um, and, I, you know, and, and you get a picture of those gross slaving uh, creatures that travel between planets and planes and... Yeah, no, they don't seem to have a home. They're always on the move. All mm -hmm. they want to do is enslave and move on and, yeah. and expand their power. Yeah, and, and just like the dominance politics between them and, and their, their, their sort of like the violence and casual disregard for life that they mm -hmm. have. And it's one of those things that I like. It, taking a, a monster's ability, this thing can all day long try to enslave you. And extrapolating out from that what that monster's existence is like like they like why would they have a sense of individuality like they do not have to respect another person's individuality at all like they want something from you they just make you do it and if mm -hmm. you don't do it now they'll try again later yeah and they'll do it to themselves and you know each other and and so you know you you start to see like yeah if you if it's this is a whole culture of like on-demand mind control like yeah these they're just fuckers they're just absolute just rotten you're more steeped in the neogi lore than i am though so why oh. don't you take the take us off let's go well i mean it, 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 <laughs> these these alien tyrants that that like come from the stars and and scoop you up and they they are the thing of nightmares they are the right. thing of like oh they got abducted like they come down and abduct you right yeah. And, and there's probing, but it's mostly just your mind. Yeah. And then their death is just as violent. Right. Right? Yes. Yeah. Like, their their death cycle is one of the grossest things. I mean, it's like shit off of... Oh, I mean, I've seen it on, you know, the Nature Channel. Right, right, right. Yeah. It, it, but they, they once they get old and senile, the young ones go, oh, it's our time now. Right. Inject them with some poison. <laughs> and they start bloating up like the blueberry kid in, mm -hmm. in the chocolate factory. <laughs> and then they lay their eggs on its back. Oh, and when they hatch, the hatchlings eat the old one, or the right. old master. Yeah. And each other. And each other, until the strongest survive. Until the strongest survive, and that is how they learn about and life. And then they are immediately mind-controlled by someone. Yes, and by then they are immediately, for, by the adults. <laughs> right, the adults. Like, the okay, all right, break it up, you kids. Yeah, break it up, you You five kids. get to live. Right, and and so <sighs> just this, uh, yeah. And, 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 okay. and But that suggests something even more vile, is that, you know, one day, one of those Neo, you will make its save against that enslave mm -hmm. and then break free and try to do it to the, to the other. And so you just have this cycle of dominance and violence mm -hmm. and possession and, and, and control. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. once they get to a certain age, I would assume that because they have mental fortitude, so they have advantage against charm. Yeah. Things like charm effects. Mm -hmm. So they'll finally get old enough to not to, to be dominant and yeah. to resist. Yeah. Does the Neogi father like shed a tear? No. I don't. Probably not. He probably he even, sheds I, a tear that he's pissed off. I would, I would imagine that they don't even recognize they're young as yeah. being like, I don't know which one of you 
yeah. came out. Like, are the, all the egg clusters on the old Neogi Master from the same one? I like to think I it's think, sort no. of like that dark crystal moment where they, the Skeksis are beating up the other one and sort of like they're injecting it with poison and breaking its bones and like making it so that the, the old Master, who is a, a warlock, right, has spells and other yeah. abilities, can't effectively fight back and the like, and the, the young can eat it. That it might just be a, a free for all of egg spawning, mm -hmm. reproduction, and violence. And when you sort of like start thinking through it, it's like this is some sort of snuff porn body horror it's, monster. Yeah. That like, oh, it, yeah. Again, but this is why we like aberrations <laughs> because there is no way to really like relate to that. Right. So you just, you're <laughs> abhorred by it. Yes. And yes. so that, and that's why it's like they make perfect monsters yeah. to detest and to hate. Like you don't even really have to have one of these do anything to your players, no. and they will already hate it. Right. But once it starts doing things to your players, well, oh, all yeah. the white hot vitriol starts coming right. out. Well, and, and um, be because they are kind of weak in, in individually, yeah. interestingly enough, you can throw a lot of them at the party, and there will be a lot of them. And it's not like one mind controlling monster like an Abolith or, or a certain, you know, like a succubus or, or something like that that's sort of like, you know, that sits at the web of manipulation. This is like a hundred tiny webs. Yeah. And, and, and you know, this one, you, you say, you, you, you know, avoided mind control by this one. Well, there's like five of them over here. Yeah. And many more of them back on their ship. And they all can do this all day long. The longer the fight goes, the more likely you are to be enslaved. But they, they also have a fuck ton of minions, usually. Right. Because if you can do that that long, like yeah. once an hour, yeah. imagine one Niyogi probably has anywhere from, I would say, conservative estimates, uh -huh. eight to 12. Uh, eight to 12 attempts, and, and let's say they're deliberately picking you know minion types who are, are not gonna pass that wisdom save. You know, mm -hmm. They're avoiding like, El they're avoiding elves and gnomes and the like, and they're targeting, you know, those uh, those peoples who are who are, you know, the weak willed. The weak willed. Uh, and this is one of those areas where, when it comes to things like mind control and monster saves and and who to target with your attacks, players might feel like the dungeon master is metagaming and saying like, oh well, how does this thing know? <laughs> you know, my fighter has a weak will save or something like that. My response to that almost always is, number one, there are plenty of different ways in which the monster might know. I will do my best to come up with like in-game reasons for that so that the, the players feel it's more justified. Mm -hmm. But it's also like, this is one of those moments where metagaming by the dungeon master can produce a more tense and exciting fight. Who is gonna be the one that's, that easily succumbs to the enslave? If you're yeah. looking to like challenge your players, thinking along those lines is, is how you do that kind of thing. Well, yeah, but I mean, I also remember that these things are masters of enslavement, so right. they know how to appraise people right. for what they are, which is a commodity that can be used. Right. right. Yeah. So when they look at a party busting in, they can see the fighter with all their armor and their sword, and they've obviously trained their body. And then they look at the one next to them, the wizard in their robes with their books. They train their mind. Yeah. I'm gonna got target the guy who trained his body, right. not the not the target who trained his mind. Right. 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 I mean, it, that's pretty basic, and I don't consider that. Metagaming. I don't consider that it is metagaming just, either. That's yeah. just tactics. Yeah. Like, and this thing would know it. I mean, this is what they do. This is all they do. This, this is, is they literally do. their point of existence is right. to enslave others to inflate their own superiority. They're constantly practicing on each other and the minions that are already present. Because you can imagine that minion acquisition amongst mm -hmm. the Niyogi is a is a free for all competition. Yeah. And that it, 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 it it's the currency in their society. It right. is their power, right? Yeah. So having the best slaves, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like having the most that is, you know, I mean this is that's what this is. And so yeah. like this is like the whole lore about it. And of course on WebDM we like to build our monsters up as sort of like from the lore to the encounter and, mm -hmm. and thinking about the ways that the monster uh, interacts with the world. This is a, a, a creature that the Neogi is a, a, a transient nomadic sort of creature, yeah. right? When it lands on your world and uses its spider spaceship to, to settle and form a temporary slave racket. They're not there to, to set up shop forever. They're not no. interested in the local power politics. They, they have no skin in the game. No. They don't care if you can, what you have to offer them in, in return. There's nothing they want except for you. You can't buy them off, you can't pay them off, you can't like co-opt them. You know, if the orcs arrive over the hill, at least you can approach the war chief and be like, well, what do you want? Like, yeah. can we help you? Yeah. <laughs> we give you swords, will you go away? Right, will you, you, will you fight for us or alongside us against yeah. the common foe? Yeah. Uh, and so like, but the Neogi are like, 
no, we're here for you, and we'll leave when we've taken enough of you, yeah. and we'll leave if it gets too rough, and we'll leave if, if whatever. And yeah, yeah, and and if you can't stop us, if you're powerless to stop us, then we'll ravage this place. It's just gonna keep coming back and keep coming back until right. you start threatening either them or their commodity or their yeah. their, their supply. Until their supply, right? Uh, right. In which the dark sort of heroes that we might have can just start committing genocide in order to stop the enslavement by the Niyogi. But that's uh, perhaps throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah. Uh, so Drowning the baby in the bathwater. Right, like <laughs> um, so like, what else is there to do with these monsters that, that uh, you know, other than slaving, right? They're sort of like plainer criminals, you know? Yeah, I mean, they are plainer criminals, but so along with the slave racket, I mean, when they hit a ship between spheres, right. what about all the other stuff? They're, right. gonna, they're gonna enslave the people and then have them turn around and either pilot that ship, if it can be, to the ne nearest harbor, uh -huh. or strip it. Because while they deal in slaves and that's what they want, yeah. surely they would also just be like, well, those other people, right. they, they, they want these, oh, they want those crossbows, they want that stuff, they want those right. shinies. Right, they want those shinies, particularly if you're, deal if you're talking about like uh, peoples who can stand up to the, you know, to the Niyogi, that the mm -hmm. Niyogi don't see as, as weak, right? Like right. there's that bit of lore uh, in, in, in Bolos where they're like, yeah, if they think it's dangerous to trade with Niyogi because if the Niyogi think they can get away with it, they will enslave you. But right. if you can show sufficient power, perhaps if I am the drow that's doing business with the Niyogi, I'm, I come loaded to bear with constructs and undead. Oh, yeah, I'm, there's nothing. It's yeah, me. I'm a cleric. You, you know, you are dealing with the priestesses of Lolth, who are blessed by their goddess, who mm -hmm. can most easily resist this kind of mind control. And they show up with their con their jade spiders, their walking thrones that that are you know spider golems, their their mm -hmm. undead constructs, their magically conjured beings that yeah. that are immune to this kind of uh, thing, demons and the like. And meanwhile, they have their entire regiment of drow male soldiers hiding. Yeah, like waiting. Right, with their 120 foot, uh, staying well out of range, range well out with of their range. darts, yep, yep, <laughs> and exactly. just like, like, yeah, they'll they'll pepper all of the minions with that, put them to sleep, put yeah. whatever Neogi to sleep, and yeah. then just wash over them. Should this go sideways? Should but, this go sideways? We're but here to deal business. Right? We're here to deal business, and yeah. perhaps you know the the foremost planar slavers in existence have the kind of uh, merchandise that the enterprising drow priestesses are looking for, and it's up to the adventurers to stop them, or it's the lithids who are looking for some sort of like perfect subject to perform an experiment on, or or whatever it is. The niyogi are probably somewhere nearby. Yeah. Selling the, the the people, selling the salvage, selling. Mm -hmm. I, I like to think of it was probably like drug pushers. You know, oh, I'm sure you can imagine that there's all kinds of mind affecting drugs that give you disadvantage on mind control slave yeah. saves that these or, people have or up. just all the other people on the ship that they're not enslaving, but right. they need to keep in order. Right, keep, keep them, them stupor, hooked. keep yeah, them keep hooked. them hooked. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, and and so that leads me kind of like just a brief tangent on one of the ways in which I would I would make a Niyogi scarier is have their poison bite do something that makes it easier for you to be enslaved. It's like they can try to enslave you from a distance, mm -hmm. but if one of them bites you and then tries to enslave you, that you're done. You, you're, yeah. you're cooked. Maybe disadvantage on that. That, that might be Well, I mean, yeah, because well, it gives you the poison condition, which is attacks and skill checks, right, but, it, but, not, but saves. not saves. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, maybe, maybe bolstering their poison where their poison also affects saves. Also affects saves. Really. I don't see anything wrong with that. Yeah. Because yeah. If, you, if you manage to get up and tangle with a Niyogi and let it survive long enough, because normally, Niyogi, like I said, 30 hit points, when, yeah. you, when, when you're fighting these people, Couple of hits, you should be able to drop one of these things. No, no problem. Right, right. I right. mean, like I can see some of the less combat-focused characters having trouble taking down one in yeah. a, if fast enough. Yeah. Um, but you know, for any of the big bruiser types or the big heavy hitters in the party, yeah. a, a round with one of these, uh, you know, once you're above say fourth or fifth level, particularly once you start getting extra attack, and oh yeah, you maybe have a feed under your belt or something like that. Yeah. Um, they, they should be less of a of a threat individually, but as we've said, they're not. You're you're probably not just going to run into a lone Niyogi. Yeah. At the very least, that lone Niyogi has an Umber Hulk with them. Yeah. Or the potential to have an Umber Hulk. Yeah. Right? See, I, I in my in, in Starward Bound, well, technically the second adventure, yeah. they ran into a Niyogi, mm -hmm. and they didn't. I didn't give it an Umber Hulk. I just right. gave it beefy humans because I wasn't an asshole. <laughs> Because um, they were only third level. <laughs> third right? level in an Umber Hulk. It's a tough fight. Yeah, It'd be a tough fight. It's, it's, yeah, I'll yeah. say. I'll say. <laughs> but I had a lone Niyogi and like three beefy dudes. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I forgot which exact uh, template I used uh -huh, for them. Uh -huh. They managed to get through those pretty quick. 
And so never forget, if you're on the Niyogi ship, use the ship, especially if you're in Atmo, because that's what I did, is I just had them like, oh, they start running at him, flip, flip, <laughs> flip yeah. the ship, ro start rolling, <laughs> right. start making them do deck They saves. got spider climb, they're not coming off they're the walls They're not coming there. off their wall, they're, they're <laughs> yes. he stayed on his plinth, he's just sitting there like, mm, I'm gonna just sit here and fly right. the ship uh -huh. and do my thing. So never forget that, because that can that can lead to a whole kind of environmental challenge of just trying to get to the thing. Right. Well, if on your, if you're on the outside, it, it'll be like it played out in Starward Bound, where there's sort of like people are falling off the ship and they're trying to get to them. If it's inside, you've got like an Inception sort of hallway uh -huh. fight uh -huh. as the sh flock ship the does walls. barrel rolls, yeah. <laughs> and you're like maybe try to pull out your range weapons uh -huh. and, and get one shot just off before you get one shot before you get tossed thing. to the other side of the room. It it turned. I thought it was a lot. It was a fun fight. Yeah. The players they had a blast with it. Yeah. Um, um, but that's another way you can kind of, because you kind are on sh on ships here, right? Right, you're on, sh there's a high potential for it to be on in, on some kind of like space faring or, or yeah. astral faring vessel, depending on what cosmos you're using. To return briefly to like the Umber Hulks, I, yeah, third level and Umber Hulks, a, a challenging fight. <laughs> and depending on party makeup might be a, a deadly, deadly, deadly fight. But yeah. the Umber Hulk is one of those creatures that like, I compare it with the troll, right? They're both CR5. And this, mm -hmm. viewers, this is one of those areas where we, we talk a lot about about why CR is not necessarily a good guideline unless you're like brand new to the game and you need something to, to sort of like gauge the difficulty of your encounters. Right. Here's an example of why CR is a less of a science and more of an art. Both the troll and the Umber Hulk are CR5 creatures. Mm -hmm. uh, the troll in every way is a worse combatant than the Umber Hulk. The Umber Hulk has better armor class, better hit points, better to hit bonus, does better damage, and it's trick, right? They're both trick monsters. Yep. Uh, its trick is a better trick than the troll's trick of regeneration, right? Yes. Like fire damage is plentiful in fifth edition, and there are some peasant classes. Peasant can light a torch up. A peasant can light a torch up. There are many classes that have on-demand fire damage mm -hmm. that, that from first level. But the Umber Hulk's confusion gaze is like it's indiscriminate. It just happens. Uh -huh. it requires no action from the Umber Hulk, but the Umber Hulk can choose not to have it affect a certain creature, right? It yep. says the Umber Hulk can force a save. Yep. So the Neogi accompanying the Umber Hulk, not having to worry about this confusion. Mm -mm. Whereas mm -hmm. everyone that tries to attack this thing suffers from a confusion effect or has to close their eyes and fight this thing blind. Yeah. Now there is a trick there where if like they've taken a poison bite from the Neogi, then fighting this thing blind is sort of like doubling up on disadvantage. Not that big a deal. Right. But it, you can't target it with spells if you've got your eyes closed. The Umber Hulk, that is. That's so, true. Yeah. So players, make sure you're, you have a bard. Um, right. yeah, fairy fire, man. <laughs> that fairy fire counteracting that. Counteracting that disadvantage. So, you know, it's all lit up. You're not looking. Eyes down. Eyes you down. See sort of the shadow of the fire. Yeah, yeah, seeing the shadow of the flame yeah. and uh, just hitting away. But I just want to talk for a second <laughs> about the imagery of a Neogi because they're always drawn as like sitting on the back of their Umber Hulks right, like Yoda, the little, the Yoda to Luke. Necks. Just kind yeah. of its, its eel neck sticking <laughs> yeah. around the side. And I laugh so much at that. I don't know why that is so funny to me. Well, it's like, I want a little Neogi backpack. <laughs> a little Neogi what backpack. What's well, like a Master Blaster from Thunderdome. Oh or, yeah, yeah. It's a fun little image and I think it, it like leans into their their image of being like these runty little just creatures but they're also, you can't just, you, they're dangerous. You can't just ignore that no, thing. No, no. It, it will get you, or something will get you, uh, you know. And, and so I, I like that image of the Umber Hulk with it. Of course, they, I, for some reason, I, I don't know why, is there, you, you're more steeped in like Spelljammer lore than I am. Why Umber Hulks and Neogi? Did, did you... You no, know, it just says, in the books, it just says that they came across this race, this dumb race of insectoid beings, yeah. and were just like, oh, this is perfect. They got armor, uh -huh, they have uh -huh. this thing, let's enslave them, and they did. And so That's it, it. it's just kind of like they just uh, came across this unfortunate race of people. Yeah. And that was it. And that was now. Really, now they are the yeah, uh, Neogi yeah, slaves okay. for so, untold eons. I kind of, I kind of like. I mean, I, I like the idea of it. Of like the Umber, uh, there's Umber Hulks on our world because Neogi once visited it. Yeah, that's that's kind of. I like that as where it's like, yeah, they're, they they used to just come from like one place, and mm -hmm. now they're everywhere because they're. You know the Neogi brought them, but came here and got killed off, and then right, but, and then a day passed, and they're, they're still here. They're still here. So <laughs> like, you can imagine the Umber Hulks being like an invasive species. You know, like those snakes that they introduced to like Pacific Islands that like mm -hmm. completely wipe out the the bird and small uh, wildlife population or something. Oh yeah, you can see that with like Umber Hulks in the Underdark. Anyway, I, I we talked a bit about Umber Hulks because they're so closely connected to the Neogi, and I was hoping there was a bit of like juicier lore other than. 
Well, they I probably mean, ha is because they're they're easy to enslave. They're yeah. big monsters, yeah. and they offer. It's, it's like it's the perfect monster to enslave to be your be your force, your fighting right. force. Right. Um, Whichever one isn't confused gets enslaved, mm -hmm. and you pick off the confused ones with the enslaved person in the Umber Hulk, and then you know you just knock them unconscious. Right. You're not trying to kill them. That's valuable merchandise. That's valuable. Yeah. Oh my right. God, yeah. Just gonna waste <laughs> something like that. You, yeah, the fight lasted like four rounds. Right. You know, obviously, it, uh, we could. Get him in the, that. In, the, we could use that. We in could, the fighting pits. Yeah, we could sell them to uh, Elithids for their gladiator, uh, their gladiator arenas, or the drow yeah. or something. So um, that's kind of like approaching where where an encounter would go with it. We've sort of talked a bit about potential encounters, particularly on the spaceship. Is mm -hmm. there any sort of like other features of the Neogi that you'd want to include in an encounter that would make for a memorable one? Well, we haven't really gotten to the Neogi Masters yet. No, because no, that's yet. that's no. the next level. Is right. the ones that have actually made the packs. With yeah, these star ancient star things. children, star beasts, right, right, right. Star, you know. Typhon and Hadar, and and, yeah. and like there's an old uh, there's a fourth edition uh, Dragon magazine article after after Dragon moved from Paizo to the the Gleemax platform that that Wizards was using at the time. There was an article that detailed all of these star entities that that could form packs with the star packed warlock in mm -hmm. fourth edition if you can find that one i don't remember the name of it it's really cool it sort of like details who is kaifon who is hadar who are the oh, other yeah. ones uh that are mentioned in uh in volos and then they're all there of course viewers will recognize them from the warlock uh invocations and spells mm -hmm. and the like so having those warlocks there maybe the neogi uh master is like you could almost sort of connect them in another way towards like a great old one cult Yes, and use them in a different way from uh, from just like a pure slaver. And there's like a Neogi master that sits at the center of a great old one cult, manipulating the cult members with enslave, or maybe just like a figurehead leader. Yeah, the leaders, right? And that it keeps enslaved, and then that leader is the face and sort of whatever of the party of, of the cult mm -hmm. they uncover, and then it's the Neogi, and then there's a ship buried that you know well, escapes from or something. Yeah, and what I'm what I'm now seeing is making the uh, rebirth. Earth cycle take a little bit longer. At the shrine, there's this bloated body that you can't yeah. see its back. Yeah. It's just the great old master up there. Uh -huh. and that's what they worship, but they don't know that the Neogi children are slowly growing on its back and devouring it from the inside Right, out. right, right, yeah, and, that, and, that life cycle. And that, and that is maybe part of the adventure is there's only one Neogi here now. And yeah. You're able to lay enough eggs finally right, to right. create a new generation. Yeah. They only have their maybe their mate that uh -huh. has now been turned into a great old master. Yeah. And so this is like the last ditch effort for this Neogi to have others yeah. of its race. Yeah, the ship is powered ship down, is powered it can't down. get it off. Can't get yeah. off this one planet. And right. so that's the thing is it doesn't have its its Umber Hulks. Right. Maybe there's there's evidence of Umber Hulk shells like in and around this mm -hmm. village here and there's this cult that has moved yeah. in. Yeah, and it's taken over the cult. It's, it's taken it's over the cult. It's shown at this sort of dark star that they can worship to yes. power. And, yeah. And, yeah. and try to give it enough power to, for the, these children to hatch and, and then they're gonna have a Neogi infestation. And then you have a Neogi infestation. Right. And so that is the, the early levels. Well, that's good because you don't like, you, you want as many of the hatchlings as possible. So the point of it is to like inject the old master with a poison that bloats it and prepares it, but you want it slow acting so that there's enough of it that they mm -hmm. don't that the hatchlings don't have to consume each other. Yeah. And then you can have as many Neogi hatchlings as possible that will so maybe sit there and, okay. So maybe it doesn't kill it right away, and then and the great old master is still conscious. Yeah, still or it's transferring cast. its consciousness to the cult leader. Yeah, or something yeah, like something that. Something like that. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, that's see, just those gross. Are, those are yeah. Anyway, those are pretty. Cool. Something like that. <laughs> something like that. I think if you're gonna include a <laughs> you just wrote an adventure, <laughs> right? I think if you're gonna include a a neogi colony of yeah. some kind, then featuring that element of their life cycle, like the the fact that the great old masters are 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 prepared as food for the new generation. That like I said, that snuff porn body horror aspect of it, you owe it to your players to include a gruesome scene of, of Neogi hatchlings eating a great old master alive. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's like Pruitt's scenario of, of, of this one like slowed down and, and are trying to create a new colony, or it's just like they come across a room where this is happening mm -hmm. and they've it's got like yeah. two Two rounds where the old, great old master tries to fight the party because it's like you can't be in here, but it's being eaten alive, and then like, you have two rounds to shoot magic off at it and attack before the hatchlings devour it. But maybe some of them like come at the party, and now yeah. they've got to deal with like swarms swarm of Neogi of hatchlings, little tiny Neogi, <laughs> right? Oh god, like the size of cats coming at you. <laughs> 
but <laughs> still maybe have like a bit of an enslave ability. Like maybe I don't something. really know. Like maybe it's more of like a group thing, mm -hmm. like them all running at you and just projecting this image. Just yeah, maybe look to like cranium rats or something as inspiration for, yeah. for that. Yeah, maybe not an enslave, but like you won't attack them if you fail your save. Or if so, because the the Neo Old Master has, is a warlock with two spell slots at fourth level. One of the spells is like hold person. Hold person. Yeah. Maybe like hold person at fourth level can get some of the parties more than one i think it's like three so that's a good chance that one of those is going to get held and mm -hmm. now those neo uh, spiders are heading towards the held one who will soon be devoured themselves mm. right like that's a mm. way you can do it the, the final insult of the neogi master the magic which holds you in place uh, persisting after its death because it's sort of transferred that over to the hatchlings is that's kind of something that I would do is just a holy shit, what's going on in here? Yeah, that's, um, that's tasty. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I kind of like that. Other other spells, uh, I, I kind of like the fact that they have counter spell and might save one of my spells for a counter spell. Mm -hmm. Also, dimension door if you want to get out. If you want to get out, just a Neogi master in this case. Um, you know that that's part of a, an encounter. The encounter itself would have layers, right? It's minions, the Neogi, then minions, then the old master. You know, you've gotten through the minions, the Neogi, and you've engaged the second wave of minions. Then that Neogi master might be thinking like yeah i'm gonna use my if if one or two of these minions go down we're 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 gonna bug out literally <laughs> you know with the mm -hmm. uh, dimension door and, and slippery viewers will know how much i love enemies with a getaway spell whether it's plane shift dimension door uh, etherealness um, there's a lot of great ways mm -hmm. to just deny your players that that victory that they're uh, frothing for yeah i finally got to do that in Star <laughs> with a pirate haskell harkin and it yeah. was it was an especially good feel. it's like, very that, satisfying seeing that look on the cool space when it happens like what i'm like <laughs> That's what it's like, Jim Davis. Yeah. I said that to myself. I was like, that's what Jim Davis. Okay, I see it now. But still, fuck you. Now, other minions. Other it minions. It doesn't matter what it is, right? I mean, that's the, th that's the thing is it doesn't have to be Umber Hulks. It doesn't have it to be. It can be anything from whatever world you're on, wherever the Neogis show up. Right, right. And it's a good way to sort of, that, that's a good way to showcase sort of uh, wildlife that's in your region. If you're, if you're one of those where it's like, oh, I really haven't rolled any of these awesome random encounters that, <laughs> that I've created with on my charts, I'm going to have some Neogi are there. That's where these monsters will be. Yeah. That's where they've been this whole now, time. Now, all <laughs> of them will be there. Right. One now, of now there's all of them. <laughs> Uh, so, I, you know, if it's one of those things where it's like, if I'm preparing Niyogi for more than just like a one-off encounter, if it's like a random thing, like, oh, I rolled a, a, a Niyogi slave vessel for my spell jamming game, it's probably like Umber Hulks and Niyogi and, and whatnot. Maybe an old, maybe a master there for, as like a pilot or something. But if I'm making them the feature of, say, a, a, a tier one or two um, adventure, then I'm going to go through the monster manual and like really pick the minions that they have and, and use that opportunity to have like... Like I'm highlighting a part of my world, as, as I'm featuring it as a, as a minion of the Neogi as a way to kind of highlight that. But it's also sort of a way to get at the uh, get at the party. As, as sort of like what if what if people they know start showing up as enslaved people by the Neogi? What if they're forced to fight people that they know or care about, mm -hmm. uh, or some not just party members but mm -hmm. villagers that they know, people they've met along the road? This is why sort of like yeah, I did that to them. Right. <laughs> that sort of like slow gaming of like, yeah, you know these people and you've met them. We had this adventure two or three sessions ago where, where they're like, what, what have you been up to? Oh, well, we got captured by Niogi and now we're, you know. Now we're here now to we're kill here. you. Now we're here to kill you. <laughs> A creature that has like pervasive and long-term mind control can be really fun in that way because you can, you can start to sort of like undermine the player's confidence in the world because it's like, well, who is and isn't? A part of this is, so, you know, if someone's here mind controlled, the Niyogi can't be that far away. Yeah, they're, they're in at the least, sewers underneath this town. Right, they're at least within a mile. They're nearby. Mm -hmm. um, and, and now you're sort of started like, you can build up through a series of encounters, build up a sort of, the first Niyogi they fight bugs out. It can spider climb. It was never really in, interested in engaging in anything. It wanted to test the party's defenses, throw a couple of minions at it to see what was going on and quietly observe. Uh, maybe you just fight the minions and never really see the Neogi. And, and then later on, as you keep battling them and, and uncovering this sort of racket or ring or, or whatever reason they're there, uh, you know, each time you learn a little bit more about the Neogi, you, you, you use a different tactic for, for the Neogi, you throw different minions at them, and then by the time they're there at, at, the, at the, big, the, the big final, like we've made it, we've, we've gotten to the heart of their lair, that Neogi Master dimension doors out of there, and, 
<laughs> and they uh, deuces. Right, and so uh, you know, lesson here, players, is hit them hard and hit them fast, and yeah. uh, always know. go for the head. Yeah, I always the strike. The, you know, the, the minions, the body, they're right. always going to be there. If you strike the head, right. You know, at yeah. least you don't have to deal with them later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, my no my Neogi Master is going to be sitting in the shadows, at least two hundred or so feet away from the party, with its el considerable range on its Eldritch Blast, mm -hmm. and in the dark, which it can see and uh, perfectly out of. Uh, that's a, yeah, so, that's another thing. <laughs> Over there with his opera glasses, just like oh, oh yeah, uh, see mm. you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they can be a campaign build. They they make good campaign minions. Yeah, I, you know, I, right. spoilers, but I, I'm kind of using them as a mid-level. As like, a mid-level. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're moving slaves and they're doing some other things, but they're not the the end. No, they're no, not no. the. This is not they're the final. The facilitators form of the yeah. in between yeah. that you you have your run-ins with and you think, oh, well, I finally freed all the slaves, yeah. yay! Yeah, yeah. Who are but they getting slaves for? Yeah, who are they getting? <laughs> what, and what for? What purpose? And for what purpose? Because it's like, yeah. are they just selling them? Then what are they buying with the money? But yeah. there's nothing to suggest that they're buying them. I mean, what's at the center of a vast network of Neogi, uh, some sort of uh, entity or being that's connected with these star gods. Maybe we're maybe you know you take the star spawn from Mordenkainen's and look and see what sort of connections that uh, go from the lore there, and like sort of like have Neogi be connected to the star spawn. Maybe you come up with something completely new or, or something like that, or you reskin an Abolith to be like a astral entity that that lives between the stars and is not really aquatic, it's something different. Uh, there's a lot of different, uh, different things. A beholder, you know, reskinned beholder or just a beholder mm -hmm. uh, could be another uh, power behind a Neogi, uh, um, you know, outpost or something. So there's a lot of really cool ways to use them in it and they connect your, your campaign world to a larger cosmos. Yeah. Um, and the like and an opportunity for your players to get their hands on a spacefaring vessel yeah. Shaped like a spider. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I just kind of see them as like truly evil Ferengi. Like, oh yeah, like Ferengi yeah, are yeah, just like strong like, Ferengi. Like yeah, capitalist to the end. But no, no, these things are fucking evil. Yeah. talk about some of my favorite minis and I'm gonna start with this guy right yeah this is a Warhammer bright wizard I think from Warhammer quest which was a kind of board game slash RPG from the late 90s I guess um, this would have been one of the uh, expansions this is probably one of the f not maybe one, well, not, not one of the first miniatures I painted but certainly part of like the first phase of my miniatures painting where it was just it was you know bad <laughs> bad paints not using any sort of like paints that are meant to be used on uh, you know pewter miniatures not using a base coat not <laughs> using anything no dry brushing no dry brushing just like it <laughs> it's yellow orange and red uh, so but he's one of my favorites because uh, you know just kind of I keep him around to show how uh, how far I've uh, I've come, and I like just kind of how bold and bright the bright wizard uh, bright wizard is. Let's see. Let's add him to the studio audience. Add him to the studio audience. Um, let's see. This next guy. We'll do a villain. This is one of the Lord of the Rings Mordor orcs, I guess. Maybe a captain or something. Um, I've got a lot of these. Uh, command squad from Lord of the Rings uh, miniatures line that I use is just generic orcs and, and hobgoblins and things like that. So this is kind of from when I was playing the Lord of the Rings battle game, which is of course what this is for those of you that uh, did not uh, know. Um, and so I was do at the time I was like really experimenting for like making sure that my basing was good, trying out dry brushing techniques. I still had some, still have a long way to go in terms of like highlighting and stuff, but I like that one a lot. Uh, a lot more. I don't know that it, he's having a name or I've ever really used him for anything, but he shows up a lot as like a captain or a warlord or, you know, big bad or something like that. Let's see. I'll do one of these. This one, I think, actually, Emma painted. Jumping thief, assassin, rogue, with like the daggers poised to strike. It's like I love the movement in the miniature and how mm -hmm. 
how just action packed it feels. Oh, uh, it's got energy. It's got energy. Um, and and Emma Emma's painted a few of the miniatures that I have. Uh, mostly she just would paint like her character. Uh, I forget which one that was from, but I think that might have been one of the characters from that she used in the um, Tyranny of Dragons game. Maybe it doesn't look like Knut, her uh, her dwarf, but maybe one of the the other like a bard or assassin that she yeah. played for a while. I think she played an assassin for a while, so that might have been uh, where that one came from. But I always like that one just because of the energy of it and the uh, and, and just the, the pose of the uh, the miniature itself. Good times. <laughs>